teach me to pray, Lord, teach me to pray. This is my heart cry, day unto day. I long to know the
us to pray. As John also taught his disciples. These were the words of the apostles after they had listened in on the prayer that Christ had been offering to his Father out in the woods. It came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John also taught his disciples. Now, the text does not say, as it's frequently misquoted, Lord, teach us how to pray. The text says, Lord, teach us to pray. Doubtless they wanted to know more about how to pray. But if there's any prayer that you and I need to pray this morning, it is, Lord, teach us to pray. Help us to feel the necessity of prayer, the urgency of prayer. The power of prayer. The reason that Jesus prayed was that he knew that without prayer, he could not do the work that his father had given him to do. When Jesus came to this world, took our nature, he assumed our liabilities, he took on our weaknesses, he made himself dependent on God in the same way that you and I are. So it was necessary for him to get help in the same way that you and I must get help. He deliberately put himself in that position in order that you and I might know that we could win. If he had had some hidden source of power to which we have no access, then his life would not be an example to us, would it? No. Let me illustrate it in this way. Suppose here is a very rich man. He goes into a very poor community, and he lives there with the people for some time. Suppose he tells them after he has lived there for some time, well, you folks don't have it so bad. I get along all right here along with you. But suppose that he's drawing on his own bank account, 20, 30, 40, 50 dollars a day. The fact that he had gotten along quite well out there with the poor people wouldn't mean very much when he was drawing on that bank account, would it? No. And so if Jesus had come to this world and had met temptation in a way that we cannot meet it, had dealt with human weakness in a way that's impossible for us. I repeat, his life would not have been an example to us. So turn over to Hebrews, the second chapter, and we will notice what the scripture says about Jesus and his condition compared with ours. The second chapter of Hebrews and the 17th verse. Hebrews 2.17 Wherefore, in all things, it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God, to make reconciliation for the sins of the people. For in that he himself hath suffered being tempted, he is able to succor them that are tempted. You notice in that 17th verse, it says that he was made like unto whom? His brethren. In how much? In all things. What for? That he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God. As an ambassador from this country to a foreign land, must be an American. So Jesus, as our representative in the courts above, must be one of us. Fortunately, he is also one with God. That secures his entrance at the supreme court of the universe. 
but his identity with us is full and complete. And so back to his prayer life. He was praying because he must pray in order to win. Notice the fifth chapter of Hebrews, how this is brought out. The seventh verse, Hebrews 5, 7. Who in the days of his flesh, that is when he was here in this world, who in the days of his flesh when he had offered up prayers and supplications with strong crying and tears unto him that was able to save him from death, and was heard in that he feared. Though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. And being made perfect, he became the author of eternal salvation unto all them that obey him. Now notice, in the days of his flesh, that seventh verse, what did he do? What does it say he did? He, he offered up prayers and Supplications. What are supplications? Entreaties. Entreaties. Earnest prayer. I remember when we were boys, my brother and I, sometimes we would go to father and mother and ask for something. Well, sometimes we got it, sometimes we didn't. But sometimes it was something that we wanted very much. And I can remember when we, we really cried about it. Did any of you ever do that? Ever want something and cry about it? Of course you had. Jesus wanted something so bad that he actually cried. He wept. That wasn't put on, my friend. He wanted it with all his heart. What did he want? He wanted victory over sin for you and for me. He wanted power to live the life of heaven here on earth so that men might see that heaven life and want it and choose it and enter into it along with him. He wanted to finish his mission in this world accomplishing the errand on which his father had sent him. I must be about my father's business, he said. But just as a battery must be recharged, in order that its power may be strong and be available, so Christ, having taken our humanity, must from day to day recharge his spiritual battery. Prayer was the agency that accomplished that. In the days of his flesh, he offered up prayers and supplications with strong crying and tears unto him that was able to save. Thank God he was heard. And all that is an encouragement to us. Now in our opening text, the disciples heard him praying like that. And when he was through, out of burdened hearts, they said, Lord, teach us to pray. Shall I say, teach us to pray like that? Efficaciously, effectually, in a way that gets something done. It is not written in the Bible that Jesus said prayer. He prayed. Is there a difference? Oh, yes. A world of difference. Men may recite prayers as they recite poetry. But that is not necessarily pray. As the hymn says, prayer is the soul's sincere desire. uttered or unexpressed. The motion of a hidden fire that kindles in the breast. Prayer is saying to God what we desire. Prayer is expressing our need and claiming his promises. Let me hasten to add, prayer is not presenting to God a list of all the things our selfish hearts want. God is not a glorified Santa Claus. You know, every year along in November and December, 
little children write letters to Santa Claus. Usually, I suppose their parents read the letters, or else it wouldn't do much good. But anyway, you've seen some of them. Dear Santa, I want a doll, or I want a bicycle, or I want a camera, or I want a top, I want a ball, or I want a bat, or I want a wanna 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 wanna. And some poor children, until they know better, they think there is somebody called Santa Claus that lives up there at the North Pole and comes down once a year with a reindeer load of toys. He used to come down the chimney. Well, of course, everybody here knows better, don't they? Now, is God in that catalog? Not at all, my friend. Not at all. We must not think of God as a means of serving our selfish end. That's the way the heathen do. Our missionaries who have been in foreign fields tell us that in some of those pagan lands, That people will come with their requests, and some of them are even criminal requests. They want the God's help in some piece of crime, some act to disadvantage others, to steal from others. Or it may be merely some selfish desire. But it has been found that in some places, when these idols do not give them what they want, they will actually whip the idol. Yes. Whip the idol. Their gods didn't give them what they wanted, so they whipped them. Now, we wouldn't do that, would we? Not with the switch. But how many people there are, my friends, who whip God with their tongue? Have you ever heard them? Oh, I have. I asked God for this or that, and he didn't do what I asked him at all. I don't think there's anything to it. I don't see any need to pray. What good does it do? Thus they go on tongue lashing. The God that they thought they could enlist as their ally in carrying out their personal desires. Well, someone says, then what good is prayer? If prayer can't get me what I want, what do I want with it? Indeed, what is the purpose of prayer? What was Jesus praying about? Why did the disciples long to be taught to pray? What is it that we need to learn about prayer? Let us turn, please, to John the 14th chapter we'll hear the words of Jesus as he instructs his disciples in this wonderful science John the 14th chapter beginning with the 12th verse Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. God desired that the work that Jesus started should not cease when he went back to heaven, but rather that it should be greater, that is, more extensive as time should go on. And that's exactly what happened. There were more conversions on the day of Pentecost than there had been all during all the time of Christ's earthly ministry. The seed that he had sown and watered with his tears and prayers sprung up and bore an abundant harvest under the ministry of the, the apostles, blessed by the Holy Spirit. So these words were fulfilled. Now notice, greater works than these shall he do because I go unto my father 
13th verse, and whatsoever ye shall ask, what's the next three words? In my name. That will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye shall ask anything, what's the next three words? In my name, I will do it. If ye love me, keep my commandment, and I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Notice the twice repeated expression, in my name, in my name. Brother Atherton, you happen to have a check in your pocket, no. blank check. Anybody got a blank check here? I need a check. Now here is a check. This is a blank check. Pay to the order of blank. So many dollars and a place for the signature. Can I go down to the bank here and get money with this? Not a bit. What's it worth? Well, it isn't worth a thing as it stands. Am I right? Yes. But suppose my friend here now decides to fill this out. Just imagine. Yeah, that's right. Just imagine now it's made out to you. I'm going to imagine it's made out to me. Pay to the order of W.D. Phrase D. Say, if it was made out to you, how much would you like to have put in there? Well, now let's just think of something big, Marjorie. Let's say a hundred dollars. Wouldn't that be a lot? My, my. All right. But this one's made out to me. Pay to the order of W.D. Frazee, one hundred dollars. Now I can take it down. I can get the hundred dollars, can't I? No. What's the matter? Oh, it needs a name. Well, that's all right. That's all right. I'll get David over here to sign it. Could I get a hundred dollars on your name? I don't know. <laughs> well, have you got a hundred dollars in the bank? <laughs> you see what I mean? We need somebody's name on there, on that check, that's back of that promise. Is that right? That's the thing. We need somebody's name on that check that's got money in the bank. How much? At least as much as the check. Is that right? And that's what Jesus is talking about here. He says, whatsoever ye shall ask in my name. You'll get it. Well, then before I run to the bank, I'd better first get a what? A check and be sure it's what? Signed. And be sure it's made out to to me. Oh, yeah. That is good. Yeah. Now, is it important who it's made out to? Yeah. I was just su supposing here that this one would be made out to me and properly signed. But uh, suppose that uh, the check gets mislaid here. And suppose Homer looks at that thing and says, my, a hundred dollars. I could use a hundred dollars in good shape. And so he goes down to the bank where this is made out on. And he pushes it to the cashier and says, a hundred dollars, please. What would the cashier say? Are you W.D. Frazee? Well, no, but then uh, I want a hundred dollars. Can he get it? Well, suppose he should say, I'll tell you. Why don't we uh, settle for 50 then? I'll take 50. Can he get 50? He can't even get 50 cents on it. Because it isn't made out to who? To him. To him. Do you see, friends, there's something about this science of prayer that we need to learn? It may be very simple, but it's very important. We who have been used to handling checks, we may think that's very simple. It is very simple. But to a person that didn't understand it, it might be amazing. 
to see people stand in line at the cashier's window and bring pieces of paper up there and carry away money. Pieces of paper and carry away money. And somebody might say, my, I wish I could do that. Is there some mystery about it? No. Oh, there's nothing mysterious about it to the one who understands it. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. So, if we're going to God in prayer, we need a promise. We need a check. We need to be sure it's made out to us. Did you ever get a check with some small print over here on this side of it? On the back? So that when you endorse it, you agree to what's above? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. You see, when you put your name on the back of the check, that indicates several things. It means first that you're the person to whom the check is issued. Is that right? It means also, under some circumstances, when the print is there, that you accept that check for certain things. Several years ago, when I was taking a trip, a man ran into my car from the back. Nothing serious, but he bumped up the trunk a little, and uh, so his insurance company, of course, paid off. And the man from the insurance company came out and uh, looked over the estimates, and he gave me a check. But I noticed that they had the check fixed up in such a way that when I signed that, that meant that was all. And when I endorsed that check, I not only said that I was the man to whom the check was issued, but I also said that I was accepting the conditions of that check. Is that right? And there's no, no other way to get the money. Suppose I'd gone down to the bank and handed the check through the window. The cashier looks at me and says, are you W.D. Frazee? Yes, I'm W.D. Frazee. You're the one this check is made out to? Yes. Very well. And then he turns and looks at the back. Oh, you must sign this. Well, I don't think I want to sign it. Why not? Well, I, I don't want to agree to all the conditions. Well, then what? You don't get the money. The check may be made out to you, but you must meet the condition. condition. Is that right? Well, that's the way it is in prayer, my dear friend. That's the way it is in prayer. We must meet the condition. And there are conditions. Aren't there? Here's one of them right here in this text. We're to pray in his name. That is, we must ask for the things that his name is signed to. Now let's take another condition. Mark the 11th chapter, the 24th verse. My dear friends, think of it. We could just have all kinds of checks being cashed every day. If people will learn the science of prayer. And the Lord knows we need things, don't we? All kinds of things. Power to overcome evil temper. Power to be happy when people around us are gloomy or miserable or irritable. Power to solve the temporal problems of life. Power to help the sick, the weary. Power to relieve the distress. So many things. All right. Mark the 11th chapter and the 24th verse. Here's one of the conditions that we must meet. Will you read it with me? Therefore I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. Now here's a condition. If you want something, it says, when you pray, do what? Believe that you receive it, and you will have it. Now, notice what it doesn't say. It doesn't say when you pray, 
believe that you might receive it someday. No, it doesn't say believe that you will receive it sometime. It says believe that you what? Receive. What tense is that? It's what? What? Present. Is it present? That's right. You know, tense makes a lot of difference. Yes, sir. If I'm hungry, it makes a lot of difference whether my dinner is here or I might get it tomorrow. Doesn't it? If a bill is due today, it makes a world of difference whether the money is in the mail for me to get this morning or whether I may look forward to it sometime in the future. If there's a mortgage coming due today and the money to pay it must be in my hands today, success or failure all depends upon the tenth. Is that right? Jesus says, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, do what? Believe that ye receive them. Believe that ye receive them. Let's go back to our bank again. Let's get some more out of this check. Pay to the order of W.D. Frazee, $100. And here it's properly signed by Mr. Holman. And I present it at the bank where his money is. And they're about to give it to me, but uh, I haven't signed here. Will they give me that $100? No, no. But what does that signature on the back mean? That means that I've received it. That's another one of the things it means. Is that right? Sure. And that's legal evidence. When that goes in at the bank with my signature on it and finally comes back to my friend, he can keep that in his files as evidence that I got the $100. Is that right? Sure. And you mean I have to sign it before they give it to me? That's right. Well, how come? That's the way business is done, isn't it? And I stand right there with not a nickel of it in my hands, and I sign my name, W.D. Frazee, and the cashier takes it. And then what do I have? The hundred dollars. I have the hundred dollars. But I must express my faith. Is that right? And I get it. Oh, my friends, if we can believe men, why not believe God? What do you say? If we can believe men, why not believe God? Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and ye shall have them. Now let's go back to Luke 11, where we started. And it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John also taught his disciples. And he said unto them, When ye pray, say, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done as in heaven, so in earth. Give us day by day our daily bread. And forgive us our sins. For we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. And he said unto them, Which of you shall have a friend? And shall go unto him at midnight, and say unto him, Friend, lend me three loaves. For a friend of mine in his journey has come to me, and I have nothing to set before him. And he from within shall answer and say, Trouble me not. The door is now shut, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot rise and give thee. I say unto you, Though he will not rise and give him because he is his friend, yet because of his importunity, he will rise and give him as many as he needed. And I say unto you, ask, and it shall be given you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asketh, receiveth. 
And he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. You see, Jesus told this story, this parable, to teach a certain lesson in prayer, another one of the conditions. There's more than one condition. We've noted, we must have a check that Jesus has put his name to. We must have a promise. We must present something that he has told us. We must sign our name. We must meet the condition. We must believe that we receive. But now watch this. This shows that sometimes we must ask more than once. And he told this story. Here's this man. He's asleep, but there's a knock at the door. He goes to the door, and here's a friend he hasn't seen for a long time. He says, come in. Come in. Well, he finds the man's been traveling since morning. Perhaps he's been delayed in getting there. Hasn't had anything to eat since morning. He's hungry. But this man Jesus is telling about is so poor that he doesn't have what? He doesn't have any bread to feed him. Now, that might sound strange to you, but in the country that Jesus was speaking of, in the Orient there, there were some of those people, they live from hand to mouth. I've lived in places like that, where people went out day by day and got the food for that day. And that was it. And so this man, there he was. He didn't have anything. And here was his friend, hungry. What did he do? Did he say, well, let's go to sleep and tomorrow I'll see if I can rustle around and find anything? Did he? No. He went out that night, in the middle of the night, to try to get some food, some food for this hungry friend. Well, he went to a neighbor. He woke him up. But the man called out from the bedroom inside. Who's there? Well, it's John, your next door neighbor here. Well, what do you want? Well, there's a friend of mine come and he's hungry and I don't have anything and I wish you'd lend me three loaves. Oh, well, it's late and the children are here with me in bed and never mind. Never mind. Some other time. But our, our man is not easily repulsed. He doesn't shrink away timidly. What does he do? He keeps talking and pleading and reasoning and arguing and presenting his plea until finally the man, in order to get some sleep, does what? He gets out of bed, goes where the bread is, and comes out and gives it to him. I say unto you, though he will not rise and give him because he is his friend, yet because of his importunity. What, what's that anyway? But keeping at it. Just begging and pleading and not stopping, not letting go. Because of his importunity, he will rise and give him as many as he needeth. And I say unto you, ask and it shall be given you. Now, not for a moment are we to think that God is like this selfish neighbor. Not a bit. Oh, no. God delights to give. You will see that as you read verses 11 to 13. But my point is this. Christ is saying, if even a selfish man will give in and give, if he's begged long enough, how much more will God, who delights to give, honor the importunate prayers of his people? Do you see, friends? Oh, how many times we lose the blessing through failing to persevere. You remember the story of Elijah? After the long drought, he met Israel there on Carmel, brought them to decision. The fire of God fell, and the whole multitude turned to the Lord. And they scattered to their homes, and Elijah although weary with the long days witnessing, went up to the top of the mountain to pray. Pray for what? Rain. And when he prayed once, he said to his servant, go and look toward the sea. See if there's any cloud. Servant went out there and looked and came back and he said, I don't see a thing. Not a cloud in the sky. What did Elijah do? He prayed again. Second time he sent the servant. What did the servant report? 
Nothing. How many times did Elijah pray? How many times did he send the servant? And the seventh time, what did the servant say? There's a little cloud just about as big as a man's hand. Elijah said, that's enough. Go tell Ahab there's going to be a great rain tonight. And was there? Yes. My point is this. Elijah kept praying until he got what he was praying for. See? May I read you a few lines from this little book, Early Writings, that I think so much of? Page 73. I asked the angel why there was no more faith and power in Israel. He said, ye let go of the arm of the Lord too soon. Press your petitions to the throne and hold on by strong faith. The promises are sure. Believe ye receive the things ye ask for and ye shall have them. I was then pointed to Elijah. He was subject to like passions as we are, and he prayed earnestly. His faith endured the trial. Seven times he prayed before the Lord, and at last the cloud was seen. Turn, please, to the fifth chapter of James. Fifth chapter of James. Sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. James 5, beginning with the 16th verse. Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another that she may be healed. The effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Elias, that's Elijah, was a man subject to like passions as we are. In other words, he got tired the same as we get tired. He was weary as we are weary. He was inclined to stop just as we're inclined to stop. But what did he do? He prayed earnestly that it might not rain and it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. And he prayed again and the heaven gave rain. And the earth brought forth her fruit. He was a man of prayer. He set forth here in the New Testament as an example to you and me in prayer. All right. Now let's see what we've learned this morning. Lord, teach us to pray. We've learned that we are to pray in Jesus' name. We are to present promises like checks that have his signature. We're to be sure that they're made out to us and that we meet the condition. We're to sign them as evidence that we accept the condition and that we believe we receive what he promised. And we are to continue in prayer, even if at first we do not seem to realize the complete fulfillment. We're to be like this man in the story, like Elijah on the mountain. Keep on praying. Keep on praying. I'd like to hear this morning from somebody that has proved the promises of God in prayer, and you're glad that God keeps his word. What is your witness this morning? I know sometimes while we have so much trouble down at the sanitarium, I'm sure is because uh, the Lord wants us to cry aloud unto him. That's right. And... Uh, if we didn't have little institutions like this, a lot of us wouldn't learn much in the way of depth of prayer. Would... Because when we're short of workers and short of funds and short of many things, this drives us to our knees and teaches us our deep and needing provide for prayer. And he tells us we receive not because we ask not. Mm -hmm. And I hope I'll learn this lesson. It doesn't seem like I will at times, brother, but I... He keeps on bringing these problems to me so that I will learn it. That's right. And I hope I'll learn it thoroughly. Good. Good. I believe you will. Brother Atherton's thought that the Lord presents us with problems too big for us, so we'll take him on as our partner, don't you? I'd hate to be in a job that was my size, Fred. Couldn't be worthwhile. I'm going to ask, I have to ask him about the little ones, who else?
Why don't you say God is one grand thing, particularly as an prayer in my behalf. We're from Gloria, and uh, we live about, I suppose, about 10 miles in 12 commercial school. And we have 10 children, and we're all different in school, but it's the baby. And every year now, for the last eight years, we, I have to go by a very treasured highway. And I'll bring the data very few times. I've gone by that I haven't seen a red. I haven't had the animals. We've done that before. And I have, there's just no way of my telling the Lord how much I appreciate it. So we have never had a rag or even a fender bender or what have you. And we, I made that trip every day, morning and night now, for our children to be with you. And I, I just know the Lord thanks for with us every day. And I'm Good. Good. Well, I was an applicant in the state police to come to the United States. We can train on what has to be there. And I was investigating about getting transportation. Most of the company said that there's no transportation because all the goals are taking the town soldiers from the you know, And I was praying in the Lord of yeah, I'm glad you got over, brother. That's good. I'm thankful that God is interested in every little detail of our lives. Yeah. I was sitting here thinking of the years in the past I prayed for one of my brothers out in sin. The day he was preaching the 300th message over family. Thank the Lord. That's good. That's a whole book in one sentence, isn't it? God bless you, sir. And that is what it is. I can just provide no thanks to the Lord. Good. Husband came in to help in the kitchen one day, and uh, he said to his wife, Lori, I wish you were as well organized as he did. Right then, I thank up, uh, offered up a prayer of thanks to the Lord for having him realize that he had answered my prayer. His son has been done little by little, but I'm thankful that I enjoy him in just the ordinary, everyday things. That's good. Our Father. We thank Thee that the great bank of heaven is open, ready to honor the signature of Thy Son. We bring to Thee Thine own promises that meet our needs. We accept Thy will as our own. We believe Thou dost hear it, because we ask in Jesus' name. Amen.